catch up. So the opportunities will abound for you to learn the Ten Commandments. And the box is going to be there. I, I would just strongly encourage you, even if you don't put them in the box, learn them anyway. Now, the question uh, can sometimes be raised, well, why should we learn the Ten Commandments? If you can just remember from the, the first message, I believe there are two primary reasons we learn the Ten Commandments. The first is, God has given us these, these ten things that are really etched in stone that I believe can help us avoid unnecessary pain, stress, and loss in our lives. Whether you take the idea of God seriously or not, I believe the Ten Commandments are there as a testimony as to how you can live a life that you'll be able to avoid unnecessary pain, stress, and loss. Now the other reason is very simple. They tell us what sin is. And friends, if there is no such thing as sin, if we don't know what sin is, why would we need a Savior to be saved from? And so those are the two reasons. <laughs> Learning the Ten Commandments will not save you. Only faith in Jesus Christ will do that. But I believe, unless you know what sin is, you will never have a need for a Savior. And so that's the disclaimer on the Ten Commandments. Now, if you have your bulletin, and you'll see our title, Take My Name But Not In Vain. I should call it Bryce, because that's my name, don't wear it out. That would have been a pretty good title, too. So you can sketch that in as the subtitle if you want to. But what I'd like you to look at right now is the point. And if you would like to, I would invite you to say it with me. The point, respect God's name. That is the third commandment. That's the one that we're digging into. And that comes directly from our text, which is in Exodus chapter 20. If your Bible isn't already automatically falling open to Exodus after a couple weeks of being in there, if you could open to Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. I will read it for you, and you can follow along with your pages turning. Go right ahead. Exodus. Second easiest book in the Bible to find. It's just Genesis and Exodus. And there you go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Now, when I, when I boil it down to the tiny ten, uh, I stated it in the positive. The commandment is stated in the negative. I would say respect God's name. But let's delve into the negative for just a little bit. How exactly do we misuse God's name? How do we disrespect God's name? I believe there are three common ways that we disrespect God's name. First one is when we use it to curse. When we use it to curse. Let me ask you a question. When you experience pain or anger, are you ever prompted to yell the name of your sibling or your child? Now, I did not say that your sibling or child caused the pain. Okay. But do you ever, do you ever feel like just yelling the name of a child or a sibling when you're in anger or pain? No. Because oftentimes, that name, the name of someone that we are endeared to, gives us the opposite reaction. It's a reaction of love. They are people that we love. Why would we use their name to express anger or pain? It makes no sense. May I suggest to you this morning, God loves you more. God loves you, and that's why His name is precious to us. 
when we use the name of God, when we use the name of Jesus, when we say, Lord, we're using the name of someone that loves us very much. What's another way we disrespect the name? When we use it to be clever. When we use it to be clever. Let me ask you this. Would you slip your mom's name into a dirty joke? To get a rise, to be funny. Would you slip your your grandma's name into an inappropriate phrase just to get a laugh? No. We wouldn't do that because that name represents provision. Our moms, us, or maybe our grandmas. The provision that we have gotten from them, when we say their name, it reminds us of the stuff that they have given us, the stuff that they have done for us. We would never use their name as a joke. May I suggest to you this morning, God has provided you with so much. God has given us everything. In fact, even the life and the breath that we have in us is a gift from God Almighty. How can we mock His provision by being clever with His name? And finally, we disrespect God's name when we use it as a cover. What do I mean by that? This gets a little bit deep. Imagine a young couple. Imagine a young couple. We just had a marriage yesterday. We got another marriage coming on Saturday. Imagine a young couple. We'll just call them Sam Smith and uh, Jenny Johnson. Okay? Sam Smith and Jenny Johnson. Fall in love. Get married. It's a ceremony. Pastor says, okay, Sam Smith, Jenny Johnson, you are now Sam and Jenny Smith. Okay? She has taken, Jenny has taken Sam's name. They get married, everybody's happy. Woo, woo, woo. Go off on their honeymoon, and two weeks later, come home. Sam goes off to work. Jenny goes home. Calls her ex boyfriend up. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Jenny Smith. Jenny Smith? Who's Jenny? Wait, is this Jenny Johnson? No, 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 it's Jenny Smith. Well, I thought you got married. Why are you calling me? What's well, just a name? Hmm. It's just a name? We would wonder about Jenny, wouldn't we? We would wonder what that name meant when she took that name. Did it mean anything at all, really? Or was she just using it as a cover? When we commit our life to Christ, we take His name. We claim the name of Christian. The Bible calls us His bride. Let me ask you, have you been faithful to His name? Have you been faithful to the one that you are committed to? So what do we do? What do we do about this? And this is the most wonderful part. This is why I love being in the New Testament time. I love the fact that we have Jesus to run to, to show us how we can honor His name. And how, in fact, we can use our words in general to honor Him. So I'm going to invite you to do a little bit of flipping. You were at the beginning of your Old Testament. I'm going to have you turn back to the beginning of the New Testament. We're going to start in Matthew 15 and move forward. Because what do we do? What did Jesus say? Did Jesus say much about the name of God? Did Jesus say much about how we should speak and how we should talk? Oh, yes, indeed. And we're going to jump on three key texts where Jesus lays out, okay, this is how you should talk. This is how you should use the name. We're in Matthew chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. Matthew chapter 15, 
verses 17 through 19. I'm going to start in verse 17. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? Thank you, Jesus, for that vivid picture of digestion. <laughs> but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. What we do, we should clean it up. Clean it up. We need to clean up what we say. Because the stuff that comes out of our mouth indeed has an impact. Indeed makes us Unclean. When he talks about slander, when he talks about false testimony, we're going to get into that on another commandment. But when we use God's name in inappropriate ways, it's slandering his name. And that makes it slander. What else should we do? What else should we do? How about, verse, how about chapter 12, verses 33 through 37? Just a few pages over. Chapter 12, verses 33 through 37. And this text inspired the Akron side of the sign saying, I'm going to check it out. Matthew, chapter 12, verses 33 through 37. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, who are evil, say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. The evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you, men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. There wasn't an audible shudder in the congregation when I read that. So I'll read it again because, whoa. But I tell you, men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Friends, I don't know how many careless words I have spoken. But that verse terrifies me. That verse terrifies me. I wish I could have that verse hung in every locker room across America. I wish I had that verse put in every break room across America. Every careless word. If you don't need Jesus yet, read that verse. We're going to be held accountable for the words that we speak. We're going to need His forgiveness. Moreover, we're going to need to confess. We're going to need to repent. We need to stop using those words that are, that are tearing people down and moreover tearing the image of God. We need to carefully choose the words that we speak. And finally, continuing to run straight through the gospel, we're going to be back in chapter 7 of Matthew. Here again, just a few pages of the Chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. And this is heavy. This is heavy stuff. Because we're going to kind of get back over to old Sam Smith and Jenny Johnson stuff. We're going to talk about taking his name but not in vain. And this is also some, some pretty amazing words from our Lord about his name and he uses it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, 
didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform the miracles? Then I will tell you plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Consistently live. Consistently live. We have to be the people we are named for. We cannot take that name and then live another way. I love stories of Alexander the Great. Not necessarily because of all the things Alexander stood for and lived for. But he was, he was a powerful leader. And the story is told of Alexander the Great riding on his horse and coming up on, on several of his commanders. And the commanders were surrounding the young man and Alexander could tell there was something going on. <coughs> Something not good. So he pulled his horse up to these commanders. And he said, My commanders, what's going on? And they said, Oh, Alexander, we have this young man. And he was captured, running away from battle. We are holding him here at, for an act of cowardice. And Alexander looked down at the man and said, Man, what is your name? And the soldier looked up and said, my name is Alexander. And Alexander jumped off his horse, grabbed the man by the shoulders, and shook him and said, change your name or change your behavior. <coughs> Friends, you need to understand this morning. Jesus will never ask you to change your name. But he will most certainly ask you to change your behavior. And he will most certainly ask you to live by the name that you have been called. As we move into prayer, I would simply ask you to close your eyes and ponder for the next few moments how perhaps you have taken God's name as a curse or to be clever. I would ask you in your heart to simply repent of that, to confess it, I should say. To simply confess that I wasn't right. And then clean it up. But friends, this morning, if you've taken God's name as a cover and been living a lie, calling yourself a Christian, but living like your old self, confess that too at this moment. And then I pray we would move into a life of repentance where we would actually change our behavior. We do this because we should never forget the last part of that great commandment. That God will not hold guiltless those who take His name and misuse it or use it in vain. There will be consequences. In your heart, in this quiet time, in this quiet place, I would simply ask you to call on His name and be forgiven today. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can be on a first name basis with you, the creator, the sustainer, the security of our life. We thank you that we can praise your name. We thank you that we can lift your name. And we thank you that we've done it this morning. But Lord, you know there have been times that we have. And so we ask that you would forgive us. And help us. Lord, we pray that you would help us. To indeed live to the name that you have called us. 
that we would follow you closely. And for those here who have never called on that name, I pray that even this morning, they would know your presence. And that they would call on you, knowing that they need you. Lord, that they would admit that they're sinners and they're lost and they need a Savior. That they would believe that you are our only hope. That you, Lord Jesus, came, lived, died a sacrificial death so that we could have forgiveness of our sins and that, Lord, that they would commit themselves to your name and to your life for eternity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name. And it's in your name we pray.